Final Notice is a 1989 thriller directed by Stephen H. Stern and starring Gil Gerard, Melody Anderson, Kevin Hicks, Steve Landisberg, David Ogden Stiers, and Louise Fletcher. The film opens in a library. This is stalking. She meets up with a guy, there's some drawing, and it looks like she just got ghosted. <laughs> Holy shit! This guy is either a cop or a detective. Talk about distracted driving. He must have tied his tie on the way there. Yep, P.I. Cliché! I have an appointment with Mr. Rheingold. My name is... Uh, I know, Miss, Mr. Stoner. Yes? Stoner? This just got a lot more interesting. Stoner is there for a meeting with Mr. Rheingold, who has an office that's a fucking mess. Ringold? Ringold? What? Oh, uh, Harry Stoner. Oh. Please. Nothing works here. God alone knows what the taxpayers shell out every year to maintain this building. Nothing works! I think he's shell-shocked from his tour in Korea. Well, for one thing, <clears throat> stolen library books. That makes for a boring movie. It's not just stolen books. It's, uh, it's vandalism. Vandalism. That's not helping. One of our employees, Miss Davis, is maintaining a very close watch on the Headley Collection. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's wonderful, really. Uh, keep up the good work. They're going to be lovers. What do you think? I think you've got a vandal with a rather warped sense of humor, Mr. Ringo. Or they're a sick fuck! Stoner gives a warning about this dude. And your books may even follow you home some night with this trusty penknife. You know what I mean? But we simply don't need you. Oh, she will. Here's the legendary jogging exposition dump in its natural habitat. A year ago, a young girl murdered over at Eden Park. And a sharp instrument was used in the way... Well, like those books you're talking about. Stoner goes to talk to the cops, and I guess Barney Miller is off today. She was butchered. Name was Belton, Twyla Belton. What about her? You tell me. What do you got? Oh, nothing. Yeah, he's just randomly asking about this murder. He goes back to the library to see if the victim has been there, and when they learn she was, he takes the case. We do have a Twyla Belton. You can mark her deceased. He gets his first lead, and since it's the first one, we know that he's not the guy. I'll give you the special waters. And I did. All over his rug. That's why I got arrested. He said that I exposed myself, his brother is a witness. Well, you did expose yourself to piss. When you were at the library, you didn't much chance to see anyone who... Uh... In the john. Wait a minute. First, you gotta promise me, no more cops. Fine, no more cops. Just tell me what happened in the john. Yeah. Private investigator Stoner has a stroke to do that. Stoner goes to talk to the victim's parents and hello there. And he's pissed. They meet up at the library and this happens. If the murderer saw Twyla with this, he may have taken it for himself to practice on what he had. Boom, Mike! Stoner checks things out and discovers her drawing of the arm. Big deal, you got a tattoo, so what? Police work! Just the type of girl who might take a stroll at night through Eden Park with a slightly offbeat character wearing a tattoo like that, like uh, some kind of a badge of his wild nature. That's a stretch. Kate meets Stoner at a local bar, furthering my take that she's stalking him. I like to deny myself liquor during the weekdays. I want to be as fresh as possible every single morning. Why don't you just douche and then you can drink all the time? We came up with four possible male suspects and four possible female victims. How? Leo with long hair. Of course, short hair didn't become fashionable till the last century. I get that by your haircut. You tell Stoner's just ready to jump out the fucking window. Very quiet. Very polite. 
a toothbrush mustache like Hitler. What? He had four books overdue at the public library. And they had to threaten him with final notice. Title alert! Suspect number one talks crazy and is not the guy, of course. Suspect two is the exact opposite and pretty high class. Are uh, you Haskell Lord? No, sir. Does he live here? Well, not anymore. Who are you? Oh, my name is Harry Stoner. Is that his name or a description? Louise Fletcher? Yeah, Haskell has something to do with it. She likes fucking people up. Their meeting turns into an episode of Jerry Springer. He left us for a tramp. A 45-year-old white trash tramp old enough to be his mother. And Stoner finds a picture with the tattoo. Where does she live? Across the river. Somewhere in the country. Thanks for the help. Who the hell is this? Harry, are you listening to me? Well, I'm sorry, what? Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. She's leaving. Who cares? Good evening. Good evening. Oh, excuse me. I, I didn't know that... Jenny some... Kilgore, Kate Davis. Kate Davis, yeah. hello. Look, if I'm interrupting anything... Not at all. I was just leaving. Did we really need this moment of awkwardness? It's like a revolving door in Stoner's apartment. One woman leaves and another one comes right in. This one's for me. I think Stoner may be some kind of scumbag. The next day, Stoner checks out the Cots Auto Repair place and asks about Hack and Effie. Then this dude takes him to their location. Come on! That's a bad sign. Mister, what do you want to go make a trouble for? What do you want to bring the law down on us for? See? I told him it ain't good to eat up your own profits. He's dealing speed? Sure. Him and me and Effie, we've got us growing concern. Why would you say what you're illegally doing? And why would you break the shovel? <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, it's just the leg. <laughs> he didn't even fucking hit him. He gets the info and heads to the motel where Effie is supposed to be. What room's she in? Hell, we've been talking now quite a while, ain't we? I ain't even seen a nickel yet. Capitalism! Come on in. Oh, that's not a good sign. Clean up at number seven, Pops! Stoner heads back to the bar and here's that stalker you ordered. So, what are your plans for tonight? Getting drunk. But I went over to Withrow High, that's where Haskell went to school. Talked to the principal, he said he was pretty scary even back then. Anyway, he's been seen around the gym and the track recently. Convenient! Okay. He drops Kate off. <laughs> What's the matter? My light. I'm on the second floor, in the front. I always leave light on by the window. Uh-oh. Stoner goes in. Burn that bulb. Well, shit. Oh. That was a $20 vase you just destroyed, babe! Oh, what are you doing? Go call the cops! Don't shoot! Lou? He's my landlord. Kate nurses Stoner's wounds and they get it on. No, no, not quite yet. She's the most beautiful, wonderful person I've ever known. We were only married for three years. It was cancer. So Stoner just played the dead wife card? And it works! They go back to the Lord's house, learning that the brother lied about seeing Hack. Is bringing the librarian really a good idea? That night, some weird shit like a brick shows up around Kate's car. Oh no. But she's saved by Stoner. That guy got knife blocked. Stoner and the cops tail the brother to a dumpy warehouse as Kate decides I'm going to bullshit mom to snoop around the Lord's place. 
They go in, and I guess we got our man. I gotta say, this guy's been dead at least three, four days. Uh-oh. They rushed to the Lords, and they discovered that Kate took drawings, and Jacob was pissed. Stoner heads to the park where the shit movie got started, and they play a game of Marco Polo. He finds Kate right there, and that's a nice shot to the shoulder, asshole. Jacob says some crazy shit, but here's Stoner with a gun, and Jacob decides he's not playing with you anymore. And they leave the end. Final Notice has a garbage plot, and its laziness is almost impressive. The love interests get traded instantly, and the characters of Hack and Effie weren't even really cast. I mean, seriously, we never see Effie, and Hack's corpse could just be some fucking crew member that fell asleep on set. And why does Kate suddenly stalk Stoner all over the place after being so standoffish in the beginning? It makes no fucking sense. It's a made-for-TV thriller, which in this era makes it a teardrop in the ocean. There were so goddamn many of them. Gil Gerard is so uninteresting, I halfway expect him to fall asleep from boredom in his own movie. It's cheap, it's dull, and when the most exciting character in your film is a librarian, you're in trouble. 